You probably spend hours every single week managing your Gmail. Well, what if I told you that you don't have to? Well, today I'm going to show you how to make your Gmail work for you using N8N. So let's go ahead and jump right in. The idea here is I have three different Gmail accounts that I'm constantly jumping in and out of every single day in order to respond to all the different client inquiries and everything else that's going on. So what I would like to do is I would like to build an automation that automatically labels these emails for me being most important to least important and automatically creates drafts on my behalf to any messages that can easily be written. Then the only thing I have to do is jump into my email and change the drafts a little bit, click send, and we're good to go. Jumping right into N8N, this is the workflow that we're going to be building today. Now, I know this looks a little bit overwhelming right now, but it's really not because each of these sections right here is almost exactly the same. The only thing that's changing is a couple of prompts on a few select nodes so that the AI responds differently depending on which email account it's using. Getting started, let's get all of our credentials connected. So, starting with Gmail, Go ahead and go to console.cloud.google.com. Link is in the description below. Then click on get started. Go ahead and create a name. Let's put an email. Click next. Let's go external here. Click next. Give another email. Click next and agree and continue. Create. Next, we'll go up to the top and we'll search Gmail. Click Gmail API. Click enable. Beautiful. Then we'll go over to our OAuth consent screen and we'll create an OAuth client. Application type, web application, give it a name. And for authorized redirect URIs, let's go back over to N8N. Let's create a Gmail node, any node will do. Click create credential, grab this URL right here. Go back over and click add URI and paste that in and click create. Beautiful, now click on data access. Let's add or remove scopes. Let's display 100. Click this check mark and click update. Click on web client one. And we have our client's ID here. Let's copy that. We'll paste it in. We have our client secret right here. Let's copy that. Let's paste that in and click sign in with Google. Make sure you choose the same email account that you were using to set up the credentials. Click allow and you are good to go. Now we need to connect Claude. So go ahead and go to console.anthropic.com forward slash settings forward slash keys. Link is in the description below and click create key, call it whatever you want, click add and copy that key. Go back over to N8N, let's add an AI agent node, jump out of it, and where it says chat model right here, click Anthropic, click here, click create new credential, paste your API key, click save, and we're good to go. Now we need to connect ChatGPT. So go ahead and go to platform.openai.com forward slash API dash keys, Link is in the description below and click create new secret key. Give it a name and click create key and go ahead and copy that. Let's go back over to N8N. Let's create an AI node and click plus on the chat model. Let's click open AI. Click here, click create new credential. Let's paste the API key in and click save and you're good to go. All right, so starting out, we have a Gmail trigger. Now I have three different triggers here because I have three different accounts connected. When you start the Gmail trigger, make sure that you have Simplify is off. The reason why you want to turn this off is because when it gets email and the Simplify is on, you only get a portion of the email, but you don't get the full email thread. So make sure that you turn Simplify off. Now I want the event to be message received and I want it to check every minute. And then I just made sure that I had the three Gmail accounts, if you can see, on the three different triggers and so if we fetch a test event that looks like this as you can see there's a lot of information here that we don't quite need but there's quite a lot of information that we do need to and you can also see that the email is mostly in HTML there's not a lot of text here which is kind of annoying to read so we fix that later on so then we connect all of these to an edit node and this edit node is to simplify the data and make it easy to access later on for example with this switch node if we access the to and from email on the switch node and we try to access here when this Gmail trigger goes, it will cause an error. So instead we put this note here so that this is just reading the variables from here and this never changes. But as you can see, these three, they have different names. This one's called Horizon, this one's called Personal, which would cause these two nodes to error. So it's better just to have an edit node here. So taking a look at that edit node, what we can see is we're grabbing the ID from here. We're grabbing the thread ID from here. So you can just take these and drop them 
over like that, it's fine. We're grabbing our subject. So if we scroll all the way down, I believe it's at the bottom. Here it is, subject. We just drag and drop that. We have our to and we have our from. Now the from is a little different. Instead of grabbing it from here, I'm actually grabbing it from right here the from address and then the HTML is this big blob right here all right and I went ahead and just tested all the steps so that we have some test data to look at but as you can see here we have the ID the thread the subject the HTML everything that we need here we're using the information extractor node right here I called it text extractor and I connected to it a chat GPT what we're doing is we're grabbing the HTML we're making a new one called email underscore content of type string and here I said the text based email content with no HTML. This is a text extract from the email and it takes all this HTML, this ugly HTML and it turns it into this. Hey there, I'm really glad to connect with you, blah, blah, blah. And if you can see the model we have connected, we're just using the GPT-4 mini for this. If you guys think that building this workflow is complicated and you just want a little bit of extra help, I am hosting a free community where I answer literally any question that gets asked in the community. So be sure to check out the link down below and I'll be there to help you. Now we have this switch node. Now what this is doing is this is routing the flow to the different email accounts. So this one up here is the Horizon Dev Gmail account. This one right here is my personal email. This one is my business email. So we have three different emails here. And basically if you look into here, we're saying if the email right here is equal to this email right here, then we're going on to the horizon path. If the email is equal to my personal email, we go on the personal path. And then if the email is equal to austin at horizon.dev, we go through the main path. So as you can see with this test, it went through the horizon path because it found out that the email was horizon software development at gmail.com. And if I click here, we can actually see that was the case. So it went through the horizon path, which goes up here. Now we have a text classifier node right here. So we'll double click this. And up here, I've got the from email, the subject and the email body. Now the reason why I put the from email here is because sometimes it was getting confused if for example, an account was messaging us with a question about billing or something that wasn't a client of ours, it would think it was and it would classify the email incorrectly. So I noticed that if I put the from email, it tends to classify the emails a little bit better. So that's really cool. Then I have a bunch of different categories here. Now each of these categories is a different label in my Gmail account. So I'm gonna show you how I made these categories in Gmail really quick. Jump over to Gmail. If we go to more and then we click on manage labels, here we can create new labels. And so I created client, opportunity, and system labels right here. And these three labels we're using along with some that were already made. For example, spam. We're using spam. We're using promotions here as well. So if we go back over here, we can see that we have promotion emails, system emails, spam, client, and opportunity, right? These are the different tags that I set up in my Gmail account. And if we click here, these emails are looking to sell or promote products to me. That's for promotions. Pretty simple. Things get a little different with system though. I said these emails are, for example, verification codes or like password reset emails or emails about payment confirmations and stuff. So I said that, you know, they have these characteristics right here. Here are some examples of emails that would be in this category and the GPT will automatically filter those emails into that category. I did the same thing for spam. I basically said that spam are irrelevant or fraudulent emails. They try to sell things that I don't want, and they have unwanted characteristics. Then we have our client category. This category is really interesting because these are clients that we already have, and they might be asking a question or needing some advice or just wanting to connect for a meeting or something. So I said that these emails are from existing clients who have engaged with Horizon Development for services such as automation, software development, or consultations. I told it what to include and what to exclude from here, and it tends to do pretty well. Then we have our opportunity emails. Now for me, these are emails of people who want to order our services or want to sponsor a YouTube or something like that and they haven't yet bought anything. So I put them under opportunity because they're emails that you know could possibly lead to us generating some sort of revenue. So I went ahead and classified that with characteristics and examples here as well. And then finally, we have other emails. Now this is the category for all emails that doesn't fit any of those other categories. And what I want NADN to do there is really just do nothing and to leave it alone. 
And then down here, I went ahead and connected our OpenAI account with the GPT-40 model, and it tends to route things correctly. And you can see I have the different routes right here, promotion, system, spam, client, opportunity, and other. All right, so now at this point, we already know what type of email it is, so we can start categorizing them. So this Gmail node right here, all we're doing is we're classifying the email to the right category. So we already know that this one is a promotion because it went through the promotions filter right here. So I can just go here, make sure I have the right Gmail account, grab the message by message ID. So that message ID is in the format properly right here. You can just drag and drop it like that. Works just fine. And then the category is promotions, which I just selected from the list. So now this email will be automatically marked as a promotion. Now all these nodes are essentially the same so I did the same thing. This one is for the category of system, these ones are for spam messages, this is for client messages, opportunity messages, and this one right here is for other. And basically I don't want it to do anything, so I just put a placeholder node so that NADIN knows it doesn't need to do anything and we're good to go. Now here's where things get a little bit different. So on the system messages, sometimes I get a message from, for example, PayPal and they need to verify some information from me or they have some sort of question about my account. And I would like to pre-draft those emails so I can just jump in, do a couple of quick changes to that email and click send and I don't really have to do a lot. So I went ahead and created an automation here to respond to the these system admin messages, right? First, we have another text classifier. Now this one, I'm checking to see if the email needs to be responded to or not. Because sometimes the email is just a confirmation code or a password reset email. There's no reason to make a response to that. Sometimes the email, however, is a customer support request or something that does need my response. So I want it to be able to decide between the two whether or not it needs to respond or not to the email. So again, I put from subject and body here. Now again, I just grab that from the format properly node and from the text extractor right here. That way we have clean words with no HTML, right? Then I have two categories. I have needs reply and does not need reply. And if we look at the category, needs reply is like your payment was declined, update your billing information, unable to verify your account, respond. So I just put some examples here. And then does not need reply, I put some examples of confirmation codes, and other types of emails that we don't need to respond to. So you can see we have two branches here. One branch, we're not doing anything. We're not creating an email, so we're good to go. The other branch that needs a reply, we have to create the email. Now, here I'm using a different AI. I'm no longer using ChatGPT. I'm using Claude. And the reason why is because Claude writes better English than ChatGPT does. So I figure, why not just put the best of the best in place and get some high quality email responses. So this right here is an AI agent node, okay? Here we've got our tools agent, and this is what my prompt looks like. Now my prompt here is really long. So I told it what it is, I told it its task, I told it the different types of responses, I gave it some templates of how I want it to respond to these different types of emails. And then right here I told it how I want it to respond, and I finally gave it the information that it needs, the from, the subject, and the body, which again, I'm just grabbing from the text extractor and from the format properly edit node previously. So you can just drag and drop these. And for this, I clicked require specific output parser and I connected a structured output parser and I just put reply as a string, make sure they're both in quotes because I want the JSON output from this AI to be very specific. Then under the chat model, I connected Claude using the Anthropic account and we're going with our 3.5 Sonnet. It's good enough. No real need to change this here because it's already coming out with some really good emails. Then finally, the only thing we need to do is create our draft email. So I made it in such a way to where this create draft email could come from any node because if you see here, all I'm using is json.reply. So that reply could come from here or here for different types of nodes on the same Gmail account. So I don't need to have a bunch of different create draft email nodes. I only need one. In here, we're making sure we're on the right Gmail. Do a draft, create the subject. We're grabbing all the way back from our format reply. The text we're grabbing from the previous node. So it's json.reply. So it will grab from the AI 
size, either this one or this one. And then we added an extra option here for the thread ID. Now, the reason why is because sometimes if you put it like this, it will create a draft, but it won't respond to the right thread. So if we go down here to format properly and we drag and drop this here, then it will create a draft email response to that email and the email isn't even marked as read yet. So when I click on the email, I'm reading it for the first time, I already have a pre-made response made right there that I can just edit and click send and I'm good to go. Now down here, I have two different types of emails. I have our client emails and our opportunity emails. And the big difference here is this prompt right here. This is basically the same. I'm just saying, hey, if it's an opportunity or it's a previous client, you know, this email needs to be responded to. And if it's not any of that, then it doesn't need to be responded to. Again, if it doesn't need to be responded to, we put our placeholder node here. And up here, this prompt changes. So now we have some email templates, but these email templates are more about business-esque. These templates are templates that I would usually send internally to clients and not responding to system messages as we call. So I gave it a couple of templates. I gave it some guidelines of how I would like it to talk. I told it how I want my signature to be. I told it what our company does and I gave it some rules down here to follow. Again, I have the same structured output parser as before with reply as string. And if we go here, we have the same anthropic chat model. So these two nodes are essentially exactly the same, copy paste. The only difference is the prompt. Now, after this point would be a really good spot to create a task and click up Asana or Notion and to notify somebody if it's an urgent email or not. I didn't do that because I check my emails every day on a schedule, so I don't really need that. However, for those of you who might need that in place, just keep in mind that right after this node, you could add a task schedule, you can add a WhatsApp notification, or a text message, or a phone call, or a Slack notification, so that you know, hey, this email is important, I gotta respond to it right now, and you jump on your email and you respond to it. Now, here we have two more sections, right? And as I said before, these sections are almost exactly copy-paste from this. I literally copied and pasted it. So the main difference here is we had to change our Gmail account to the one we're responding to. If you can see here, this is the personal branch coming from here. So we make sure it's on the personal email. We have to make sure that we choose a new label because the labels that we created previously won't work on the new Gmail. And you have to make sure that you do that for all of these nodes here and for this node here. This node also we need to change the Gmail account. Now the major difference between this one and this one are these two nodes right here. These two nodes, the prompt changes entirely. On my personal Gmail account, I don't reference that I'm the owner of Horizon. In fact, I don't talk about it at all. So instead, I change the way I respond to the emails. I change the tone I use. I change the inputs I used. I don't talk about the YouTube because nobody with my personal email even really knows I have a YouTube, right? So it's totally different. And for the system emails, this for the most part is almost exactly the same, but the difference is, is again, how I respond in the signatures. And then finally for this email, this is another company email, but this email doesn't have access to the YouTube. So again, these prompts are a little bit different, tailored for the email account that they're connected to. And the main difference being these two nodes here have different prompts and these nodes here and here are connected to a different Gmail account. I hope that this video helped you guys out. If you guys would like some help with your automations, I am hosting a free community. So be sure to check out that link down below and I'll see you guys next time.